Hi, this is an Anne with an anagram on creating a circle object that um, has dependable behavior. Uh, it can create a string. We can log the parameters of the circle to um, the console and it can draw itself. So um, it's been a while since we've done drawing code, so I just want to sort of start at the beginning, go slow, and review what we have here. Um, I have a folder um, for this demo that has an index.html. Uh, this should look familiar to you. You will be getting code like this and need to change your name and your attribution section. And at the bottom, it includes two pieces of JavaScript. One is point.js, which we'll look at in a minute, um, which is a point object code. And the other is the starting drawing code, which um, you'll get a version of this and need to be modifying it. So um, if we look here, um, quick look at, at the CSS, all we're doing is giving our canvas a background and a border. Don't need to pay too much attention to that. Um, we have a point file already. Um, this is, has two functions in it. One takes a, if this function is run as a property of a point object, it will create a string that gives us a nice um, view of what the, prop, the two properties values are. And we have created a function which will dependably create a point with the properties we want, x and y, and with also a two-string property that overrides the default, and that two-string property is um, assigned a value of this point-to-string function. And what that allows us to do is be able to um, make points reliably and also be able to print them out on the console reliably in order to debug them. So um, we also have in our new convention, um, our code here to draw um, a couple of things. It has two functions, one to draw a circle and the other to draw a rectangle. And what I'm gonna be doing in this video is converting this draw circle to a draw method on a circle object. And then you're gonna do the same with the draw rectangle um, in your coding. So then we will have a circle object that can draw itself, a rectangle object that can draw itself, and then we can start to have fun drawing things. Uh, we have a run method here. So remember that all of our inline code is going to be wrapped in run, and it doesn't actually get executed until this line down here at the bottom is executed. So um, all drawing code needs to have a context on which to draw. So these two lines at the top of run are formulaic. We're just going to have them every time, and we're always going to get this CTX context. And when we ask <coughs> any code to draw for us, we have to pass that context object to the code that's going to do the drawing. If I, um, if I run this code now by going to index.html, and running it and opening it up in a separate window, okay? Um, you'll see I get a red circle and a white rectangle. And that matches up, supposed to, pretty nicely, with um, this code that creates a point at position 100, 100 on the canvas. That'll become the center of our circle and um, we have a circle that's size 100 and color red. And we ask this function that knows how to draw things to draw this particular circle on the context. Up here in draw circle, the context is used in every one of its um, statements. And the properties of the circle, which we set See if I can get both of these on the screen at the same time. Down here, we have a center. So this center is a point. A point is an object. And in this case, the point is a property. 
is the value of a property of this circle. So one of the things that you need to get used to is the fact that objects, among the different kinds of properties they can have, is they can have other objects as properties, and, and they can also have functions as properties. So the center is a point that has an x and y, and up here in this arc command, when we need to pass it a location, we use circle dot center dot x. x is a property on a point. This point happens to be called center, and that center is a property on this circle. So we have an x, a y, a size, which is actually the radius of the circle, and then the rest of this um, function call simply starts somewhere on the circle and goes all the way around. And um, the circle color is used for the fill style. So we have a red 100 radius circle centered at point 100, 100 on the grid. And that's what draws this. By the same token, with draw rectangle, we set up a we set up a, a rectangle object for it. Um, rectangles are drawn from the upper left corner, and I could have made this property. I considered making it origin. Um, I considered making it upper left corner. I chose upper left as being uh, fairly indicative, um, fairly meaningful, and um, shorter than upper left corner. So rectangle has a property where we tell it what the point is, the location of its upper left corner, and rectangles then have a width, a height, and a color. And you can see that when we draw the rectangle, we call the function draw rectangle, and we pass it a rectangle object, Draw rectangle unpacks the properties of this rectangle object, assigning the color to fill style, and then using the upper left property of um, the x property of the upper left and the y property of the upper left, the width and the height to actually do the drawing of the rectangle. And that's what gives us this white um, rectangle. In one of your first assignments um, for this week, once you get your objects working correctly, is to turn this large red circle and this smaller white um, rectangle into a reasonable um, version of the Japanese flag, which is a white rectangle with a small red circle in the center of it. So um, that's what the draw code does. It works perfectly well, but we want to convert it into having a circle object which has the behaviors of being able to stringify itself and draw itself. If we look at point JS, um, which you should be familiar, familiar, to, familiar with from a different vi earlier video, um, it has two methods. Um, the primary one is actually make point where if we call the function make point with a location x and y, we dependably get a point object with properties x, property y, and a two-string override. And that two-string override is the function that's defined here, which simply creates a string version of the values in the point, which can be used to log it, or to, um, to insert it in another string to concatenate it with any other string. So what we're going to do for circle, what I'm going to do as I work, is I'm going to be moving, converting the code for circle into, um, into similar functions which um, which then can be moved into a separate circle file and be able to see um, both the attributes of the circle on the, um, in the console log and be able to draw it. So let me just show you that. If I open up my console log here and move this over a bit, you'll see that we're, that point 
is getting logged, labeled and logged just fine. But circle is still using the default two string um, method that all objects have. And we, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna give circle the ability to report itself in the console log more, more clearly. So um, we actually know how to do that. Um, here we have a point to string function. And uh, to start with, I'm just gonna put another function up here called function circ circle to string. And um, it doesn't need, because it's gonna be operating within the context of an object, it doesn't need any arguments or parameters. It has no arguments passed to it. It receives no parameters. It just uses the attributes of the circle object. So if we go back here and we go circle to string, um, it's gonna be a function. It's going to create a variable and return that variable. Uh, and rather than make you watch me fat finger the typing, I'm gonna pull the code for what that string concatenation is gonna look like um, from another copy I have. So we're gonna grab that and we're gonna bring it over here. And you're gonna see that what happens is we end up with three parts. We'll have something that shows us where the center of the circle is, what its size is supposed to be, and what its color is. And in each of these cases, we are, um, a, we are concatenating the value of size, the value of color, and the two-stringed value of center, um, because we know that when we concatenate an object to a string, it gets, um, the two-string method gets called. But because we already have one of those for points, this should work fine. So here, I now have circle to string. It doesn't get used unless down here in my circle object, I name that as the function that should be called with the name of the two string property. Again, the IDE is going to want to try and put a pair of parentheses on the end of that, but I'm not calling that, that function here. I'm simply saying to the object manager, when you need a two string function, call the function I've defined as circle to string. And if I save that, and I go back over here, what I'm hoping is if I refresh this page, this, um, this line, instead of saying object object, is gonna give me a reasonably well formatted view of what the data in my circle is. So um, let's hit it, I'm gonna hit shift refresh. Let's see what happens. And that's what happens. Um, so here, I put curly brackets around the output of the point to string. So I can see that I have a center that's at x, your x 100, y 100. My size is 100 and my color is red. And that's exactly what we want our two string property to do for us. Now the other thing that we want to be able to do is we want to be able to draw this function. So let's just talk about taking draw circle, okay, and it's already up here, so I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to move it, but I have a function de definition for a function called draw circle, and it's expecting a circle to be passed for it, passed to it. If it's running inside the context of an object, then it doesn't get a circle passed to it. What happens is every place here where it currently says circle, we use this, which you should read as my object. 
So we want this function to be running inside the context of an object and everywhere that it needs a property from that object, it uses the word this. And so when run inside the context of a circle object, it still needs the context to draw on, but it's going to, it's going to use my object color, my object centers X and Y properties, and my object's size. And then in order to make that a property of this object, all I do is add a property called draw, um, and the name of the function is the value of that. So draw circle. Okay. And remember your IDE may want to put parentheses on that, but you don't want to call draw circle. You just want to tell this circle object that when it needs a draw function, it calls the one that's named draw circle in this file. So now, here, instead of doing draw circle and passing it circle one, this line changes to say, hey circle one, please draw yourself. And oh, by the way, here's a context that you're gonna need when you do that. Now, we've refactored the code, but we shouldn't change what it's done. So if I've done this correctly, which is always the big question, um, and I save it, and I go up here and I shift refresh, I should see the same exact picture, but if I type circle one, um, Oh, right, circle one is inside draw. Okay, so I don't have a global circle one that I can use. Um, but I have circle one and it's been able to draw itself. Now, one thing is you're working on this code that you may want to do is every time you test it, just to reassure yourself that it's actually, that you're actually getting new functionality which is always the question when you're refactoring and you're changing the code, but you're not supposed to be changing the behavior. Change something simple like the color. And then when you come back and redraw it, if it's working, you'll see that you're getting your new version of the code. Okay, so we have an object. Um, it has two string and draw methods. But what we'd like to do is rather than have to type this out every time we want to do a circle, we'd like to have some code that dependably makes that circle for us. So um, what we're going to do is um, create a copy of point.js. I think this is the simplest way to do this, is just duplicate that. But we're going to call it circle.js. And we're going to move the code that's in here into circle.js. So specifically, this function circle to string, I'm going to take it out of here and put it in here instead of point to string. And this code um, here. This draw circle function, I'm going to pull it out, get rid of it, go in here, and there's no corollary to draw for the point class, so we're just going to add a function here. So I just pulled exactly the same code that was in my other file and put it in here. And then I have one more thing to do, which is I'm going to pull this out. Um, I'm actually going to copy this and not pull it out. I'm going to pull this, go over to circle.js, and down here in this, I'm going to rename this make circle. I'm going to make a, I'm going to copy in 
the code I got from before. And just change this function name to be, this variable name to be a little bit more generic. Take that circle, return it. Now, the trick here is um, when I make a circle, I already have, if you look back here when we make circles, we already have 0.1 and then we need a size, a color. And so what I need is I need center point. I need um, new size and new color. And I'm making these parameter names different than the property names, just so it doesn't get confusing. So the center of my new circle is the parameter that's get passed in as center point. The size is the parameter that gets passed in as new size. And the color is whatever color I say it's going to be. And I need to finish this object. Okay. Now, what's nice about make circle is I'm consistently always, always going to get the same exact property names. I can't fat finger those and just get a typo. And I don't have to do anything about two string and draw because those methods are the same for every circle. When they execute, they use the properties of the circle they happen to live within. But their definitions are the same for every circle. So if I go back to um, draw.0, what I can do here is I have my point one. Um, I'm going to change this to be a call to make circle. And I want to hand in the center point, which is point one. Um, my size, I'm going to change my size just to make it smaller so we can see that things are working. And this time I'm going to do a pink circle. And when you're refactoring code and you're not supposed to be changing the behavior, it can get confusing about whether or not you have actually changed anything. So as you're working, change small things that don't, that are noticeable, like size and color. And then every time you test your code, you will know if, it, if your new code is running or your old code is running. Now, I'm going to run this, and it's going to fail, but I want to talk to you about that. So if I come over here and I run my code, it breaks. And the reason it breaks is because make circle is not defined on this line at run. Okay, um, which is line 24. So let's go back and take a look at that. Okay, make circles not defined because I haven't pulled in the code for circle.js. To do that, I need to add that here. It has to be added after point because it makes use of point, and it has to be added before the draw because draw makes use of it. So if I duplicate this line, and I make this circle.js and I save it. Then when I go back and refresh this, that problem is supposed to go away. Let's see if it does. Okay. Not going away. Okay, let's just make sure we have everything. Oh, yes. Always good to actually save all your files. So let's just do a save all. Okay, so now circle.js has all three functions in it. Index.html is pointing to circle.js. And with any luck, my code will work. Okay, and I have a little pink circle up there. That's plug ugly. Um, so I have a circle that shows me what its properties are and can draw itself. So your mission is going to be to take code that's much like this and do for rectangle 
what I've just done for circle, which is create a rectangle.js and um, functions for to string and draw that become properties of a rectangle object that you can dependably create with a make rectangle function. So that the instructions for that will be in the slides, but I just wanted to show you how to proceed with um, circle. And when you're done with all that, you actually get to have some fun and draw some flags. So I hope this helps. Um, I know it's long, but thanks for sticking with me.